Cookies are delicious and the internet can't survive without them. No, I'm not talking about delicious oven-baked cookies. I'm talking about the biggest underdog on the internet right now, browser cookies. Will cookies survive the next decade or will they go extinct? And what does it mean for the future of digital marketing? Listen up and I'll tell you all about how a healthy diet of browser cookies is exactly what makes the web so great. When a new technology comes along, a new scapegoat is also created. The internet has brought so many good and bad things for the world that it's hard to blame the internet whenever something bad happens. It's easier to blame the symptoms of a problem and not the problem itself. And that's where cookies come in. So what exactly are cookies? Well, cookies are small files of information that a web server stores within a web browser to track people across the internet. That's boring. Quit boring everyone! Cookies are how the internet remembers you and it saves you the hassle of having to log into websites every two minutes. These innocent little morsels are a vital part of how the web works. Yet they are an easy target because they're often used to store personal information of website visitors. Of course, we all know that blaming cookies for the bad things that people do with them is like blaming the laws of gravity every time a leaf falls from a tree. This is becoming a big problem though for marketers because we need cookies in our lives. And according to Google, cookies are essential. And this leads to my controversial opinion. Cookies are good for the web, they're good for the internet. They've just been misused by advertising platforms. So why publish everyone when just a few large companies abuse cookies? These companies should be regulated instead of having cookies banned. The reality is that everybody is impacted by cookies in a positive way. Cookies are important to information seekers, bloggers, and publishers because it's how information is found and it's how publishers get credit for the traffic they drive to affiliate sites and to ad platforms. Cookies are important for shoppers and e-commerce stores because they eliminate the friction from e-commerce transactions by remembering your personal information. Cookies make transactions easier and more secure than the old way of doing things. Cookies are important to mobile device users and app developers because they allow for an easy handoff between devices and they keep track of progress as we watch videos, browse the web, and more. Everyone is affected by cookies, yet not all cookies are created equal. So let's talk about the two types of cookies that are used to personalize our online experiences. Confused by cookies? Let's define the types of cookies that are used to track you. It's literally the biggest party on the internet. Let's talk about the party. First party cookies, they're created directly by the website or mobile app that you're visiting and they are only accessible to that website or that app. These first party cookies allow websites to collect customer analytics data, remember language settings, and carry out other useful functions that help provide a good user experience. They are supported by all major browsers and they are safe to use for all users. Simply put, there's nothing wrong with first party cookies and your life is richer because they exist. Then there are third party cookies, which are where the controversy begins. You know all the good things that I just said about first party cookies? Well, third party cookies are like their evil twin. Well, at least that's how they're portrayed by privacy advocates, governments, and inform web users. Third-party cookies can be set up by any third-party domain and share your data with any other third party. And so, for example, if you install the tracking pixel from Facebook ads on your site, Facebook can share data about your users with any other advertiser on their entire platform. And sure, this information is shared anonymously, but that's pretty crazy to think about, right? Facebook's pixel is a Trojan horse to nearly every major website to know about somebody's activity. And the crazy thing is that once a third-party cookie is set, there's nothing a website owner or a visitor can do to limit where this information goes. It can be sent to the highest bidder, it can be used to follow you across the internet, or even for blackmail. The only way to control third-party cookies is to block their usage outright. Now, fortunately for most internet users, your browser will either block third-party cookies automatically by default or give you a way to control them. And the same is now possible for mobile apps as well. So while the worst part of the cookies, which are third-party cookies, are mostly contained these days, cookies still get a bad name all over the world. But why are cookies controversial now? Well, cookies have always been controversial. It's just more noticeable now that big governments and tech companies have taken action. But cookies have been villainized for as long as I can remember. When I worked at a computer lab in college back in the year 2000, 
People were asking me about how to clear their cookies because they read some kind of news article in the newspaper. My first job out of college back in 2004, I worked for the public school district of Minneapolis and the teachers refused to log into the substitute teacher placement platform that I was managing because they didn't want cookies to be enabled. They couldn't use the system without cookies and they said, I don't want to have any part of it then. And in the late 2000s, several web browsers came with third party cookies disabled by default. But then when mobile apps started to take over, we started hearing a lot less about cookies. And since the App Store on Apple launched in 2008, third party cookies had even more upward mobility, especially with a lack of transparency in how apps track you. Cookies just sort of existed behind the scenes, unregulated. And not so coincidentally, those are the same years when Google and Facebook ran wild and drove up profits while taking privacy out of the hands of the user. At least browsers have transparency in what cookies are set. Apps? Good luck seeing what cookies are set and what data is shared with your mobile device. It wasn't until Apple released iOS 14.5 that they finally decided to take a stand against the widespread use of third-party cookies, tracking everything you do inside of mobile apps, and sharing that data with the highest bidder. Now you've probably noticed this dialog box when launching an app for the first time. Do you want to give permission for this app to track your activity across a limitless number of apps or websites? Or do you want to ask the app not to track you? And I'm going to close out the video with this. Eat your first party cookies. They are delicious and good for you. Browser cookies aren't bad in moderation. First party cookies are essential to the internet functioning as we know it. Much like how delicious fresh baked cookies aren't bad in moderation either. But when cookies are abused, you're going to end up with long term health problems. The reality is that cookies are everywhere around us and we all need first party cookies to make the web usable. The problem with browser cookies is that there isn't a problem at all when it comes to first party data. Most people think they can ignore the third party cookie controversy though and it will go away, but that's not happening. In our next video, I'll show you why things will never go back to the old way and how everybody is being affected by the changes with third party cookies. And so if you're concerned about the future, I'd consider server-side tagging. To get this printable decision tree, go to ddu.ai server.